Look at how pretty that jig is. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but it has an absolutely beautiful sparkle to it. Let's have a look at how we make that. Hi everyone, Dennis from Dennis Goes Fishing here. And you notice that today, the background's a little bit different. I am in my workshop here, which is a little bit of a mess. It is a workshop for a little bit of everything. And what I am doing is I am getting ready for my first night fishing outing of the year. And I am getting a whole bunch of different jigs ready. I have these things set up. I used to work midnights and I just, that's what I would do. I would sit and make jigs. And I have tons and tons of jars of uncoated jigs. So today, I am finishing the coating on those jigs with a few different colors. And I figured I would uh, turn the camera on and show you how I do that. It is a very simple setup, and you do not need to spend a whole lot of money on it, which is my favorite thing, because it's effective, and it works. And they turn out very, very nice, and especially compared to a lot of the ones that you go and pay. you have any idea what these things cost these days? You can buy them at the bulk stores, and eh, they're okay, but you'll be paying... One of these beautiful little things, you can easily pay a dollar a jig. I do not have anywhere near that invested into these. Now to buy the setup to make everything and pour all your own and accumulate the lead, it is fairly time consuming. But if you have somebody that can make you the jigs, or if you got somebody that's willing to sell these to you, or if you do want to get into it, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Really, the only thing that we need as far as tools is an old toaster oven, some powder for some powder coating, a pair of pliers, which are over here, and a pick to clean out the eyelets. So let's have a look at how we do that. Step one is to pick out your jigs and load them into your oven. As you can see by looking at this, this is a dedicated oven. The powder coating is supposed to be non-toxic, even though it is a plastic coating where you literally just melt a plastic powder onto your jigs, or whatever it is that you may be powder coating. It works for anything that's metal. Uh, not a good idea to be baking lead and plastic in your kitchen oven. You may or may not get a talking to for doing that. Not that I am speaking from experience. This particular jar was my random jig jar where I just threw all kinds of different shapes and sizes into it. So I'm going to load these up and then the powder will typically come with instructions and I don't think it's pertinent which brand of powder. You see I've had this one for a while. Get that dust in the oven, that was smart. Which brand of powder you have. Uh, it will give you instructions for what temperatures to use and how long to do it. And for this particular application, we're not building a show car here, so it's really nice. It is really forgiving. We get a bunch of these different ones loaded up, and then we'll move on to the next step. These jigs right here are really nice for casting. These football heads are better in rocky areas. They will grab weeds like crazy, but they don't get stuck in the rocks so well. These Erie jigs, I am a big fan of, especially for jigging the bottom of the river. Absolutely love them. A little bit bigger than this. This one's a good size for casting. These little flutter jigs are more of an ice fishing thing, but I want to give these a try, casting the bigger ones for walleye at night. And what else do I have in here? I'm out of non-coated ones, but these banana head jigs are my favorite for casting at night. They just seem to be a, a good mix of not getting stuck in the weeds, not getting stuck on the rocks, and the catch fish. I don't know if you can pick that one up, but this is one of my favorite finishes on here. There's a lot of sparkle in that. When it comes to the colors, I do not think that it's really that important what color it is, as long as there's some sparkle to catch the fish's eye. 
And of course we have our regular round head jigs. This one wasn't great, that one won't hold the baits on very well, but I can use that one for a bucktail jig. So something like that is just your standard go-to, it'll never do you wrong. So on this particular oven, we're going to turn our temperature up to 450. We're on bake, and then we're going to cook those for about 20 minutes. And they'll get nice and warm, and then once they've warmed up, after about 10 minutes, we can start dipping them into our powder and coating them, and I will show you how that is done in 10 minutes. While we're waiting for the oven to heat up, let's talk a little bit about color selection. The guy that taught me how to night fish, stubborn old fella, met him down at the dock, told him I couldn't catch fish. He said, ah, come with me. I've got fish. That's even better than trying to lure a aspiring fisherman into your van with candy is the promise of catching fish. Well, that all turned out pretty good. And this is what he showed me. We have a quarter ounce jig with a four aught hook and a white grub. And that's all he used for night walleye fishing. And he caught a lot of fish. I have found my personal opinion or my personal preference I like his quarter ounce jig. I like the four aught hook. I like a sparkly clear coat. Those ones are my favorite. He was adamant about the red eyes. I've met fishermen that think the eyes make a difference. I've met fishermen that don't. So it's really whatever works for you. My personal opinion is that the only thing that matters is the sparkle. Whatever color it is that you want to use, whatever color you feel the most comfortable with, you're going to catch the most fish with because you're gonna feel confident with it, you're probably gonna use it the most, and hence, you're gonna catch fish with it. I think that technique is a lot more important than the particular color you use. I know a lot of people as well that think that the jigs have to be absolutely perfect, and they spend a whole lot of time getting everything absolutely great on it. You can see I missed a little spot coating that one. My personal opinion on that is the more beat up the jig is, the more fish you're gonna catch. And here's an outstanding example of that. This is one of the first jigs that I ever made. One of the first rubbers. I have no idea how that rubber bait is still on there. The tail is a little bit off. I didn't put it on the hook quite right. And that jig has seen better days. I got most of the powder rub right off of the bottom. I catch fish on this. My personal opinion, the more beat up it is, the better. Just keep the hook sharp. That one, I should probably go back and watch my video on hook sharpening and get that one fixed up. The jigs have been in the oven for a little while now, so let's start powder coating them. The powder that I ordered came in this type of container, and I found that trying to get the jig down into the powder, especially as it gets low, was very difficult to get just a small amount of powder on the jig, and I was usually plugging up the eyelets. So I transferred them over to these little mason jars, and even as you're running lower on the powder, they seem to work pretty efficiently and pretty effectively. So what we do here with our hot jig, open up my oven, pull the jig out, give it a little shake, tap off any excess powder, and then there you have it. So we're going to put that back in the oven to cure. Very important at this point, I'm going to turn my oven down to about 375 from the 450 degrees Fahrenheit that I had it at. As if you cook the powder too hot too long, you can burn it, and it will discolor your clear coats. There are powders that have the metallic colors in them. If you don't have those, or those are a little bit more expensive than what you would like to do, you can just grab a standard powder and then clear coat it with a sparkle. That jig was a little bit deformed. If you'd like to do a two-tone, you can do that as well before the powder is fully cured. You just grab your jig and lightly touch it into your powder. And now I have an orange and blue jig. 
does that really matter to the fish? I am not 100% convinced that it does, but the fishermen sure seem to like it. If you wanted to go for more of a sparkle pattern or a sprinkle, we could do that too. Let's see here. Whoa! Losing powder. I can just sprinkle that a little bit. That didn't turn out so great. You really can do as much or as little with this as you'd like. Let's just dip one in and we'll take a look at the whole process. Take it around in the powder. Uh, this one got a little bit cool, that's why I didn't coat all the way. I like these. I think they work just fine. Nice work. Let's try that one again. Once we're in the oven, you can see that the powder here has fully melted. That one is fully melted as well. This is one that we've just stuck in and I haven't closed the oven door yet. So it started to melt a little bit, but it hasn't fully liquefied there yet. So now we close it up and we are going to set our timer to 20 minutes. I have lowered my temperature a little bit and we're just going to let this do its thing. If you want to take your jigs one step further and add that nice sparkly clear coat, you want to do that before they've had the chance to completely cure. So I've let the powder melt a little bit. We're going to dip it, shake the excess off. That's what it looks like. You can see that I got a nice hot jig there because the powder is already starting to melt into it. And then stick it back in the oven. And this is that sparkly clear coat, which looks absolutely gorgeous. I think my favorite color is this translucent blue, which already over a nice shiny jig looks really nice and sparkly. And then when you add that sparkly iridescent clear coat to it, it just makes a piece of work or piece of art. I prefer powder coating to painting. Some people prefer painting. It really is whatever works best for you. And now we wait for that 20 minute cure time, come back and see what we've got. And let's see how they turned out. I think those jigs are absolutely gorgeous. That is going to catch us a fish. And best part is they didn't cost a whole heck of a lot to make. So we'll put together another video that shows you how to go from hook to jig so that we can then go from jig to painted jig. And I'm going to put together another video for you, knife fishing for walleye, show you how we use these. Thank you very much for watching. I very much appreciate it. Hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you on the water.